Remember the last time that this happened? If you're still renewing SSL certs manually, then you probably don't know that you can use Terraform to completely automate the registration and renewal of SSL certs and never have to worry about expired certs ever again. So in this video, I'll show you how to use Terraform to maintain a public SSL certificate and store that on an S3 bucket in AWS. So there's a few bits that you'll need in place first. The domain or subdomain that you're gonna be using must be hosted on AWS Route 53. The second thing that you'll need in AWS is a private secure S3 bucket that you're gonna to use to store your SSL certs and private keys. And the last thing you'll need is credentials to a role that has right access to your domain on Route 53 and right access to the S3 bucket. Once you've got those bits in place, we're good to go. So to get started, you're first gonna to want to pick your SSL provider. We're gonna want one that supports the ACME protocol. ACME stands for Automated Certificate Management Environment, and the most popular provider that supports Acme is Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt is an incredibly well-trusted CA. It's in most modern operating systems and browsers, and best of all, it's completely free. So now let's dive in and write some Terraform code. So what I'm gonna do now is create a reusable Terraform module that will take a bunch of inputs and it will be responsible for talking to Let's Encrypt to register renew certificates and then store the results in S3 on AWS. So firstly, I'm gonna create my bare module and I'm gonna call it SSL. First thing I'm gonna do is create a file called terraform.tf. And here I'm just gonna put the basic boilerplate stuff for Terraform. So in Terraform TF, I'm gonna list the Terraform providers that we're gonna to need to use in this module. So it'll be in the required providers block, we're gonna need the AWS module from HashiCorp because we need to talk to AWS for not only the domain validation for Let's Encrypt, but also to store the SSL certain key into Route 53. We're gonna use a module called Acme that comes from Vancouver. And a quick shout out to the author, Chris Marchesi. This is an awesome module. And then lastly, we're gonna need the TLS module from HashiCorp. So now we've got the providers we need, we can save out of that. So now we're gonna create a new file called variables.tf. And in here, we're gonna put the inputs that this module accepts. So the first input that we're gonna need is the server URL. So this is the API endpoint that we're gonna to talk to for Let's Encrypt. There's a limit per day on the amount of requests that you can make through this live endpoint. If you are in a test environment and if you just want to throw a lot more requests for a test certificate, then you can just add dash staging here and talk to the staging API. But we're gonna leave this as production for now. So on with the rest of the inputs, the next one we're gonna need is a common name. So the common name of the SSL cert request. We're gonna need an email. And now we're gonna create an input called DNS alt names, which is gonna be the list of alternative names for the SSL cert request. We need to know what the name of the S3 bucket that we're gonna to upload to is. So we call that S3 bucket name. And then finally here, I'm gonna have an input for the AWS region, which I'm just gonna to default to EU West one. And so there we've got the inputs for this module. So server URL, common name, email, alt names, the bucket name, and the AWS region. So that's all good, save that. So this is where the fun starts. We're now gonna create a new file called sslcert.tf. And this is where we're going to implement the Acme Terraform module. For the first line here, I'm just gonna tell it that I want to use the Acme provider. And the Acme provider accepts a server URL, which is what we defined earlier, which defaults to the production Let's Encrypt endpoint. And now we're gonna create the resources that we need. So the first resource is a TLS private key. This comes from the HashiCorp TLS module and this will generate us a private key to use for our request. And we're gonna specify here that we want an RSA key. So the next resource is an Acme registration. So we register our private key with our email address and we're giving this the name of registration. And finally here we've got the third resource which is Acme certificate. Again, coming from the Acme module. So here we have the account registration which ties into this resource here. We're giving it the common name for the SSL cert request and any alternative names. The next bit here is important. Let's Encrypt has various ways of verifying who you are that are called challenges. The challenge that we're gonna use is DNS. So this is why we need the domain hosted within Route 53 so we can tie all this together. So Terraform will do what's necessary in Route 53 in order to modify the DNS that so Let's Encrypt can then validate and the whole thing ties together. So here we're setting the DNS challenge and we're telling it to use Route 53 as a provider. So we've now got Terraform code to talk to Let's Encrypt and request and renew certificates. We now need to store those certificates somewhere. So we're gonna add some more code here to push those certs and keys up to our S3 bucket that we created. So we're gonna create a file called storage.tf. So here we're gonna use the AWS provider. We're gonna give it the region that we specified in our variables file. 
and I'm going to create a couple of AWS S3 object resources. So one of them is called private key. We're going to tell it to store this in the bucket that we defined in our variable here. The key within that bucket, we're going to extrapolate from the common name of this SSL certificate with a dot key extension. And then the contents we're going to pull from the certificate generated in sslcert.tf. So this will dynamically take the output of the Acme certificate resource and store that in our S3 bucket under this key. We now need one more for the certificate. And again, very similar, we just call this one certificate. We are using the same bucket and we extrapolate the key in the same way, but we just add .crt on the end. And the content here, rather than being the private key, is the certificate that comes from the Acme certificate resource. So now we have a Terraform module that's capable of talking to Let's Encrypt and using their API to renew and register SSL certs. And we have that uploading the results of that to our S3 bucket. So now let's write some Terraform code to actually instantiate this module and create an SSL cert. So in the root here, I'm just going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this SSL certs. And this is where I'm going to be managing the SSL certs I want to create. So the first thing I'm going to create here is a state.tf file. So we're going to configure the Terraform state. I'm going to be using the S3 backend to store my Terraform state in an S3 bucket that I know I've already got access to from these credentials. And I've got a bucket here called Craig Dunnet Terraform and I've got my state SSL as my key. If you're just testing this out, you could just use a local state file as well. So now I'm going to use the SSL module I wrote earlier and create a SSL certificate for www.craigdunn.net. You could do all these in one file, but I'm going to create separate files for each of my certificate requests. So www.craigdun.net.tf. And here I'm going to use the module SSL. And I'm going to source that module from modules SSL. So that's referring to the module I have under here. And the inputs that this module will take Remember what we put in our variables.tf is common name. So in this case, I want www.craigdunn.net. I want an email of craig at craigdunn.net. And then the final thing is the S3 bucket name. So where I actually want to store my SSL certs. And I created one called Craig Dunn SSL. And that should be all we need. So let's flip down into our terminal down here and we're gonna go into our SSL certs folder that we've just created. This is a brand new Terraform instance, so I'm just going to Terraform in it. And this will initialize my backend and pull in all the providers that I've requested. So that looks good. So now I can run a Terraform plan and see what Terraform will want to update. So Terraform plan. So here we can see that it wants to add five resources. If we just skip up the top here, we've got the, the certificate will be created because it doesn't exist. So that's the, that will talk to Let's Encrypt. Then we're going to further down here is we're going to create the S3 object for both the private key and the certificate. So that all looks good. I'm now going to do a Terraform apply and then watch this happen. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to say yes. And now we're going to go forward a little bit in time. So we can see that's finished. It took a little bit of time, about two minutes. Um, we can see here that most of that time was spent just talking to the Let's Encrypt endpoint. And we can see the last thing here is that we've created two objects in S3. And if I bring up my AWS console here, and we can go into Craig Dunn SSL, which is my bucket. And here I can see my certificate and my key. So the cool thing here is that the Acme provider will not only register new SSL certs, but when it runs, it will also check for nearly expired certs. And if those certs are up for expiry soon, it will automatically renew them. So if Terraform runs and one of your certificates is due to expire in say five days, it will automatically renew that with Let's Encrypt, download the new certs, upload those into S3. So all you've got to worry about is keeping your servers up to date with whatever's on your S3 bucket. Where this can become completely hands-off and automated is if you tie this up into GitHub Actions. So the process of adding a new SSL cert is just to check it into a Git repo and GitHub Actions will kick off Terraform to perform these tasks and then put that GitHub Action on a schedule. So you're running it every day or every two days to make sure that all your certs stay up to date and renewed.
So I hope this video has been helpful. If you've got any questions, please do leave them below or any suggestions for future videos. And if you did like this video, then a thumbs up would be really appreciated. And if you wanna see more of this kind of stuff, then do subscribe. And I'm Craig Dunn, see you in the next one.